I think about that scene from Alien vs Predator where he like spits acid on him and, and then it just like melts through everything. I wasn't gonna mention And I think that that's what most people first. think of, of acid. I mean And you know what, Jake? I got a C in chemistry. I don't work for the MCAA because I'm a chemistry major. I'm excited to learn a little bit today. One thing I do know is that for a lot of people, acid can be a four-letter word. Uh, tell me why that's not the case. Well, literally, by definition of being a four-letter word, I mean, acid is a four-letter word, right? Uh, but with regard to the context that that's used in, it's really not a bad word. It's not something that people should be afraid of. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that acid is everywhere around us. I mean, our stomachs, for example, are full with gastric acid, which is primarily comprised of hydrochloric acid. The thing that, that people need to understand is it really is a necessary component uh, in order to do something such as dissolving an alkaline material like a mortar spin. The pH scale goes from 0 to 14. Uh, the acidic side of the scale is on the lower end of the scale, so 0 to just about 7. And the alkaline scale is from 7 to 14. Your acids that you're going to be seeing used for new construction clean down, removing mortar smears, uh, and those types of soilings are going to be on that lower end of the pH scale. Hydrochloric acid can run anywhere from a 0 to a 1, depending on its concentration. No. Chris, tell me why you have to have that acidic component in order to dissolve an alkaline material like that. So mortar is made up of cementitious materials, uh, everything from your calcium silicate hydrate, which is the cement that has been cured, as well as calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is a alkaline material. In order to break that bond, you need something acidic to break that apart and loosen that mortar from the surface. All right, so we've got a, a little demonstration set up here. We've got a, an acidic uh, new masonry cleaner, and then we've got another new masonry cleaner that uh, may be marketed as a, a synthetic acid or a detergent-based cleaner, but in reality, it's still the acid that's doing the bulk of the work, right, Chris? Correct. Um, so both of these materials are an acidic material. Uh, they both are on the lower end of the scale. Um, like Jake said, one is your traditional new masonry cleaner, um, and your other one is what is marketed as a detergent or synthetic acid or even a non-acid acidic cleaner. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to put a small drop of this acid on each one of these substrates. So on concrete block, like I said earlier, just like with mortar, it's a cementitious material. So the calcium hydroxide, the calcium silicate hydrate, all of those are going to react with an acid-based material. With limestone, it's based on calcium carbonate primarily. So you'll see, again, it will react with that type of material. On sandstone, however, sandstone is made up of silica particles, sand. So you won't see a reaction there. Sand will not react with these types of acids. And then clay brick, is also made up of silicates, so it also will not react with acids. Now with synthetic acids, or uh, products that are marketed as such, uh, they tend to also have the same effect. So you should see the same type of foaming action, dissolving action here. Same thing on a limestone. But Chris, isn't that just a detergent-based cleaner? So all of these types of cleaners have detergents in them. Um, detergents is just another word for surfactant or soap. And that is great to have because it helps with wetting the substrate as well as easing, uh, easing the rinsing uh, step as well. But unfortunately, they don't do anything for removing mortar themselves. You have to have that acid there to dissolve that bond, to dissolve the mortar off of the surface. Otherwise, you're just making the mortar cleaner. So, Jake, thank you for the chemistry lesson. I, I don't know if I would get a B now, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, if I understand correctly, the product data sheet doesn't always tell the full story, whether something is a detergent or a concentrated acidic cleaner. Right. Where should people look for the right information for the product? Well, first and foremost, the, the best place to look to determine whether or not the product is acidic uh, is the safety data sheet uh, where it will tell you, should tell you, the pH of the cleaner. 
Uh, just because a product is promoted on a data sheet as a detergent or a concentrated acidic cleaner or whatever it may be, in reality, most of the proprietary masonry cleaners developed, whether ours or someone else's, are kind of a combination of both. So to market a product as a detergent-based cleaner uh, when it's really a, a concentrated acidic, and yeah, there are some detergents, there's some surfactants and some other components in there, uh, but that's kind of like calling a vodka soda a water-based drink. <laughs> You know, it's not the it's not the water that you're there for. It's the, yeah. it's the vodka, right? In this case, it's the acidic material that are doing the bulk of the work. So as far as acidic materials go, um, yes, you do need to take the proper safety precautions. And the reason that I bring that up is because when products are marketed as uh, detergent-based cleaners, um, you may not take those safety precautions into mind. Uh, if, if they're marketed appropriately as an acidic cleaner, uh, then you'll know right out the gate that, hey, I need to take these, these particular safety precautions. That may be a respirator, that may be gloves, that may be, uh, should certainly at least be safety glasses and things like that. Uh, but again, if it's marketed in a way that uh, doesn't highlight that fact right out the gate, uh, you just could open yourself up to concerns. Provided you deal with them appropriately and you protect yourself, they're very safe and they're the most effective way to achieve the task at hand. Uh, you just need to know exactly what it is that you're dealing with. So Jake, that makes a lot of sense and, and I'll give a shameless plug for the MCAA. We want to elevate masonry as a craft and the overall quality of work that's done. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when in doubt, uh, feel free to reach out to ProSCO. We've got over 100 people in the field across the United States alone, uh, specifically to be on job sites with you, assist with test panels. Uh, there are plenty of resources out there that can help you get to the right, right product, right application, right method. And, and uh, get that building clean and, and lasting for many years.